Hi, I'm Amanda McGarry, and I'm going to be talking about injecting joy into remote math experiences using interactive simulations. I'm presenting today on behalf of the FET team out at the University of Colorado Boulder. So what is FET? Well, FET includes a collection of over 150 award-winning interactive simulations and over 2,000 activities, 170 of which are specifically for remote learning. The sims cover topics in physics, chemistry, math, earth science, and biology, and can be used in K-12 and college classrooms. They're open educational resources, which means they're free, and they're translated into 93 languages. They can be run online or offline. All of the simulations are designed with a solid research base around how students learn that inform our learning goals and visual design. Each simulation is also user tested with students and sometimes involved in classroom research. All of that goes back into our research base for future sims. I'm going to show you an example of a simulation that embodies many of these intentional design features, such as an intuitive interface, implicit scaffolding, dynamic feedback, and pedagogically powerful actions. This is the Equality Explorer simulation. It has five screens, and while students can begin on any screen, they usually start on the first one. So that right away, I immediately just want to drag items up onto this balance. And I'm seeing that immediate feedback about the fact that this, the scale is unbalanced, and I have this inequality statement that's updating and is now an equation. Some of the scaffolding also comes from the fact that snapshots is minimized, since this is really more of a teacher tool, and then teachers can direct students to use it. And also these different scenes here that add layers of complexity on top of the original one. Now on the second screen, again, I can play around with this balance, but here I have positive and negative integers to play with. I also have a new tool, which is this lock here. So if I click the lock, I notice that now I can drag objects up to the scale and also off of it at the same time. I can even combine a positive one and a negative one. So a lot of really interesting feedback is getting layered on here with new representations, but building on a lot of the same familiar ones. On the third screen, I have the option to change the value of a variable so as I drag that up here to my balance, I can see how changing that value makes it unbalanced, and there's a particular value that balances it. On the operations screen, I can add objects up here, but they look a little bit different because now they're actually combining as opposed to being separate objects. And I have a tool up here that allows me to apply an operation to both sides of the equation. So I might wanna start playing around with that and see that nothing here is wrong or incorrect, but some things feel a little bit more productive than others. And I can even start to discover ways to undo something that I had previously done. Finally, on the last screen, I'm invited to play a game where I can test my understanding and again, just play around. So if it says to solve for X, I can play around with, well, what does that mean? Well, adding one doesn't seem to help me. Let me subtract one. Maybe I can divide. And nothing here is wrong, but I can start to work towards something productive and get some feedback that I've done something correct. So what makes FET Sims joyful? Well, they're designed to be used in a variety of settings. They have dynamic visuals with immediate feedback. They invite inquiry and provide a natural environment for asking predictive questions. All of these qualities can make a standard teacher-centered lesson more engaging. However, their open-ended nature makes them especially ideal for a guided inquiry lesson. In a guided inquiry lesson, students are playing with the simulation while following along with an activity that a teacher has prepared for them. We know from research that students find simulations to be engaging and deeply enjoyable because the volume in the classroom increases as students excitedly share their findings, they get feedback that is satisfying and sometimes even silly, and all students can access the content due to the low floor, high ceiling nature of the interactive environment. We also have teachers and parents let us know all the time that their kids love simulations. Here's a parent of a student enjoying learning about fractions. 
Here's a classroom discovering slope and slope intercept form of a line. Here's a classroom having a blast playing with variable expressions. And even during remote learning times, teachers are finding that FET simulations can add interest and engagement to their PowerPoint lessons. So how can SIMS add joy to remote learning? Well, first, FET sims are easy to access on the web and can be downloaded or embedded into many lesson formats. You can also send students directly to the simulation with a simple URL. Teachers can use a sim during a pre-recorded or live lesson, but because of their intuitive and exploratory nature, it's wonderful to have the students play directly with the simulations. That could be prior to an online lesson, during a synchronous guided inquiry online lesson, or while watching a recorded lesson. To make online lessons even more engaging, students can pair with a peer in an online document or breakout room, as well as share their thinking with the online class by using the simulation. During a guided inquiry lesson, include open-ended challenge prompts. Design questions that allow for the students to do the heavy lifting and let them make connections. These connections will be meaningful for students and help them deeply understand the content because they get to experience it. So instead of directing students on how to use the sim or which controls to use, invite them to find all the ways to do something or what's the largest or smallest. What are two different ways to do the same thing? Maybe develop a procedure for something that they've been exploring and understanding. Name something in the simulation and explain how do you know? You let them use the simulation to justify their thinking. Remember, we want them doing the hard work. This is a tough time for teaching and learning and vet simulations can make remote learning experiences just a little bit more joyful. Where can you learn more? At the FET website, you can find our collection of over 160 simulations and filter by topic, grade level, and more. We also have apps that make it really easy for students to access simulations at home. There are over 40 math simulations covering K-12 and college level topics. Here are some examples covering place value and addition, ratio and proportions, solving equations, and vectors. There are plenty of teaching resources on the website to support educators, including videos, activity writing strategies, and remote learning tips. Every simulation also comes with SIM-specific tips, sample learning goals, and teacher-submitted activities. You can access all of our free teacher-submitted activities, including some specifically designed for remote learning from the teaching menu or directly on the SIM page. Connect with us on social media or partner with FET. For information about our partnership, you can email fet-partnerships at colorado.edu. And of course, none of this would be possible without the support of our generous funders and partners. Thank you.